Welcome to another Airbrush Asylum video. In this tutorial video, I'm going to show you how I airbrushed this ute or pickup truck for all of our friends overseas on a Harley uh, trike body. So you'll notice that I've got the reference artwork printed out to scale. I'm making up a, a few paper templates which you'll see me use throughout this three-part tutorial. And what I'm doing with these templates is I'm cutting out some of the darker values and the key areas of the design. And that's going to give me my sketch as I um, go along. So I'm going to have those paper templates to be able to spray through, as well as like a negative template, as you can see here, which I'm lining up on the trike body. And um, that way everything's to scale and I've got any edges that I need to be completely sharp like say certain shadows need to be sharp, then those can be airbrushed in accurately using these paper templates. The first color that I'm gonna use is a light blue. So this is a Trident airbrush paint, just white paint mixed with some blue and obviously some reducer in there too. The amount of reducer is totally up to you and the air pressure, I get asked a lot what sort of pressure and um, reducer settings that I use. Uh, I tend to go on a 30% paint, 70% reducer with an 18 to 20 PSI um, setting on my regulator. Now that's for when I'm using a, a wider micron. At the moment I'm using the Eclipse, so the HPCS Eclipse which runs a 0.35 mil needle nozzle setup and that one can um, sort of push through a bit of a heavier paint so you probably, for this base color, I've probably mixed it about sort of 60-40. So 60% 60 uh, reducer, 40% paint, and I've turned the pressure up a little. So you notice here I've got a bit of overspray uh, leaking underneath the negative template. I'm just cleaning that off with some water-based degreaser. This is a House of Color product, and um, you can get all different brands. doesn't have to be House of Color. That's just the one I use. Because the original Harley body has already been cleared and protected, so that's the original factory OEM colour, uh, the painter of mine just wet sanded it to prepare it. I'm working on top of that with uh, the water-based Trident paints, so obviously any of that overspray comes off nice and easy just using a water-based degreaser. So lining up another one of my templates here, you can see some of the key areas that are cut out. And using sepia brown, I'm going to airbrush in some of these areas. And when I unmask it in a minute, you'll see uh, what the stencil will create. So you'll notice that I've got sort of areas that I can flip open and sort of I haven't cut right around, so those bits don't fall right through. That might, uh, the reason for that is that it might need to be a negative and a positive. So just keep that in mind when you're cutting your templates. And you can see here the result after spraying that sepia. So it's not looking like much at the moment, but as I go on through this tutorial, you'll see the artwork build more and more and more. So you can use this method for any artwork. It doesn't necessarily have to be a vehicle like what I'm showing you now. Obviously with a vehicle, some of those um, edges need to be extremely sharp to be accurate. So that's why I'm using these paper templates. Yes, you could do it freehand, but you're never going to get it as sharp as a paper template will give you that really defined edge. Uh, and what I like to do is I'll use these paper templates just to get my guide and my foundation. And then I might go over some of the areas that need to be softer with the airbrush freehand and that will just soften off that edge. So a combination I find of using freehand airbrushing as well as these paper templates um, just allows you to get a more realistic end result.
So spraying in some of the drop shadows here from the vehicle with my sepia brown. I hope you're enjoying this video so far. If you are, feel free to give it the thumbs up, share it out so that we can build this airbrushing community together. I do weekly tutorials here, so if you haven't already, consider subscribing. And um, yeah, you can tap on that bell icon and that will notify you every time I put out new content. For more info on any of the products used within this video, jump in the description below. I'll have some links to products there that will make it easy for you to find. Um, and on bowl means if you've got any questions, leave them in the comments below. So I have switched to transparent black. This is transparent base mixed with black and some reducer. And I'm just uh, getting some of these darker shadows in. You can see I'm not just coating them straight over the top. I'm pull pulling out some of that detail and then I'm blending back over them to make them darker. The reason for this is if you add some of that detail first and then dust back over it, uh, you kind of can look through these shadows and see some of that real subtle detail and that's going to make your uh, artwork pop a lot more than just spraying in a flat tone. As I always say, follow your reference. That's essentially your roadmap to your artwork and if you follow that accurately um, then you'll create a very nice looking artwork. The other thing to note as well is with references, I use them as a reference. So you don't need to necessarily 100% copy everything. You can put your own little flair to it. So keep that in mind. Be as creative as you like. So I'm currently using the Iwata CMC Plus Micron. This runs a 0.23 mil needle nozzle setup. And continuing with that black, I'm just rendering some of these details within the cab of the uh, ute. Just going to remove that template now to reveal where I'm up to and you can see it's starting to take shape now. Got a lot more detailing in there. And now I'm going to render a bit more on the headlight area and just to get some of these uh, shadows and body shapes in. And I've switched back to sepia now so I'm using that to further render. So if I'm unsure, grabbing that template again because I know that's to scale and accurate and spraying in some of those body lines. So that's the beauty of using these freehand shields. Uh, once you've made them up, hold on to them until you finish your entire artwork because you might need to grab some of them back out, even modify them a little as you're working through your artwork and bring them back into your design to get some of those edges and uh, key design elements in the artwork. So you'll notice here I'm using that part for the headlight as a bit of a positive mask and to create some of that shading around that area.
So I'm masking that positive now and utilizing the airbrush freehand, still continuing with uh, the sepia. I'm also using one of my fire tool freehand templates just to get some of those curves put into place of the body line. And then I'm rendering from there. So obviously be careful when you are using freehand shields because they'll give you that defined edge. And I'm using a texture template here by Airshot Stencils just to begin to get some of that uh, panel to look a bit more damaged and uh, weathered and rusty. So up nice and close to get real defined shadows and further away for the softer ones. You can also lift the freehand template off, off the surface to get sort of a mid shadow so it's, it won't be as sharp as when you lay it flat so use that to your advantage. If you're unsure definitely uh, play around on a scrap piece first so just even if you have just a little scrap piece of paper next to you and you can try out a few of the uh, shadows before you do them on the design. And just grabbing one of my uh, paper templates here to render in the visor nice and accurately. So I'm just holding that on as a positive mask and spraying over it to create my visor edge.
Okay, so now I'm switching to white and I'm using my CMSB uh, Iwata Micron. This runs a 0.18 mil needle nozzle setup. I'm going to start to add in some of the highlights and also build some of the areas where we're going to have some of the rust. So the white's going to add another element to the design. And it's also going to be a basis, like I mentioned, for other colours to go over the top so that I can accurately render that rust. So utilizing that uh, texture template to get some sharper, more crisp uh, textures. So these bits essentially are going to be a bit brighter, so you're getting that variation, which is going to help when um, I lay the colors over the top. And be very careful with the white, so less is more. So follow your reference and only add it into the areas that have that white, bright white highlight on there. And white is notorious for more tip drying, so I tend to run this particular colour nice and thin. And I always make sure that my needle's nice and clean, so picking that tip drying off and blasting the airbrush out regularly is just a normal thing when you are uh, utilizing white.
So adding some softer white highlights as well to give a more subtle reflection on the panels of the uh, ute. And then some real defined ones where necessary to really bring up a real bright white highlight and to accentuate some of that chrome. That pretty much wraps up uh, part one of this uh, tutorial video. Be sure to check out part two. And take a look at some of the other videos that we've got listed here. Uh, you may find them helpful. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now.